Here we have the Moto G from Motorola. The 8GB version of this phone costs around £140 SIM free. It's a budget smartphone which packs some punch for its small price. The phone looks very stylish and it feels sturdy. The face of the phone has an almost all black appearance. At the top you find a 1.3 megapixel front facing camera, wide notification light and one speaker. The bottom has no buttons at all. The main buttons are all on screen. The side of the phone has a volume rocker and power button. At first I thought they looked too small and therefore would be hard to use, especially with my big fingers. However there is no problem at all and the buttons are easy to click. At the top we have a standard 3.5mm port for earphones and speakers. On the rear we have a 5 megapixel camera with an LED flash. The phone is slightly bulky but it's no real problem. The phone sits comfortably in your hand and can be used easily with one or two hands. You don't have the problem you do on some of the latest smartphones where you need two hands just to take a selfie because the phone is that big. The phone features a vivid IPS 4.5 inch display. The screen has a 720p resolution which is also impressive. A few phones nowadays have a sharper 1080p display but in all honesty I don't think it's really necessary for most tasks. The only place where you are likely to notice the lack of a very high resolution is when you navigate certain websites with small text. The viewing angles of the screen are good, colours are bright and vivid and the screen is sharp enough for most applications so the Motorola does well there too. The phone features a 1.2 GHz quad-core processor. This makes the phone fast and snappy. The phone rarely ever gets stuck anywhere. When it comes to day-to-day -day activities, it is as smooth as the Samsung Galaxy S4 which features a superior processor. The 1GB of RAM is also sufficient for multitasking easily. I haven't noticed any problem there either. Now one place this phone falls a little short is in gaming. You can easily play 2D games, but 3D games such as GTA may feel slightly laggy at times. Here is the Antutu benchmark results, which helps you to compare the performance of the phone. The phone comes with a non-user replaceable 2070 mAh battery. This provides enough power to easily last a day, or maybe even more. The Moto G comes in 8GB and 16GB variants. Unfortunately, there is no expendable storage, such as microSD card slot. So when you're out of storage, you're out of storage. The camera is also slightly disappointing. Shots in the daytime look good, and all the details are captured. However, at night, despite the LED flash, the photos look rather grainy. Also, it takes rather long for the camera to focus sometimes. The panorama features seem to work fine. A minor problem is that the phone does not feature a dedicated shutter key, so you find yourself having to tap the screen to take a photo. I found this to be a problem as my last phone did feature a shutter key and I'm quite used to that. Arguably, the Moto G doesn't have many special unique functions. It runs the latest Android version, which is 4.4 KitKat. We have been promised an update to Android 5 Lollipop when it comes out. The phone is very stock Android, which I'd argue is a positive thing. The phone runs very smoothly and doesn't feature much unwanted software, which sometimes slows down phones. The user interface is rather simple to use, but also very customizable, which is a perfect combination. All of your favourite apps are almost definitely on the Google Play Store and available for the Moto G.
The Moto G is a fantastic phone, especially for the cheap price of around £140 in free. The phone is packed with the essential features, but you won't find anything unique. If you're looking for a phone for day-to-day -day tasks, then you don't need to look any further than this phone. The only reasons I'd personally upgrade from the Moto G is for the slightly weak gaming performance and camera. This version of the phone lacks 4G, but a 4G version of the phone is available. The phone doesn't include NFC either, but I don't think that's a massive problem. Thank you very much for watching, make sure to like, comment and subscribe.